and you have must have means to control for that if possible. Uh, and uh, it's a little bit more difficult with spread in comparison to toxicity because you can't have human life without spreading things. As you walk out, you have carried with it you everything that you all back your uh, I will bring me back home and buy it. So but you have to try to to have so so alert that concern and say well, but we have to be specific about this. Another concern would perhaps be <coughs> diversity. Uh, it may I don't know, that's not, not my feel at all. It may be a problem if we have too many, too large more cultures. Uh, on the other hand, we, we couldn't survive if we everywhere had 100% total biodiversity. So we need to create some, some monocultures in order to grow, in order to survive. So, so maybe <coughs> biodiversity is a good thing, but uh, from, from an ecological point of view, uh, we also need to understand and communicate that it's not the number of species per se that is essential. It is the dynamic of the ecological system to withhold development. So if one or two species uh, disappear, it's not a big problem. But if the smaller or entire ecosystem that we're working with is deteriorating, then we have a problem. So that is try to focusing it not on the number of species. So Biodiversity, just another example, is a, is a concern that we have to be specific about. <coughs> uh, and I think that the biologists have to address these and take the lead because they have the knowledge. Uh, but of course there must be other concerns as well. Uh, hunger to feed people, to bear more quality. We eat too much junk food. We must, there's a, Enormous health problems uh, escalating in terms of obese, just fat people. We eat not good. So we have to improve quality, and you have to help us to do that. So there are concerns of both benefits and risks that we have to address. But now there are many opponents here. Yeah. Uh, down here. Uh, I'm not actually an opponent, but uh, I would uh, be interested to hear uh, uh, another. Uh, view on this. We've been talking a, a lot about uh, the risks associated with spreading, but there is also the possibility of benefits from actually engineering things that do spread. And I think that there are examples, uh, you may correct me if my, I'm wrong, uh, that are on the way in North America where they are going to genetically engineer, I think it is Alms, uh, Almar, uh, which uh, has been uh, ha hit hard by some uh, beetles some, uh, who has been uh, reducing the number a lot. And they, they have been talking about modifying these uh, alms and then releasing them. So uh, here would be an example where you have the exact opposite. You actually want them to spread. Uh, and uh, I would like uh, to hear your opinion on uh, this, about not just talking about the risks of spreading, but the possibilities. They had a hybrid of cod and poplar. Uh, was it poplar? Right? Sorry, I'm Okay. <laughs> and it was resistant <coughs> to cold. But of course, if you start discussing in, uh, energy enriched algae that uh, are being researched now, genetically modified algae. Uh, and spreading in them into nature. Of course, you run into the whole the, all the other discussions about spreading them. Can we guarantee that it's risk-free, etc., etc.? What will it do to biodiversity? Even if you start to discuss controlled agriculture the, or ag controlled forestry, so it's a, it's a great opportunity. Sometimes you would, would like to spread. For instance, algae that could be harvested or planting forests that are more resistant to certain diseases. But it's, it's a new kind of scientific debate that nearly goes into the field of geoengineering. 
And there are ways of controlling spread too, which I think if you have concerns um, that, that you need to look very carefully at how you can control spread, if, if at all you're going to proceed. So uh, there are various regulations in Europe, depending on which country you're in. You know, you, you can't plant a genetically modified corn, I think it is, within 10 meters of unmodified corn in one country, and another country it's 800 meters. And, you, know, you, you need to consider you know, how mobile these genetic organisms are and, and what the risks are. So, I mean, I take your point completely that um, spread is an issue to address, and I, and I think you have to address the risks associated with it. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, apart from more specific things about spread, I think you already mentioned something about uh, the Spanish people. If that would get out in the public, that would be uh, as I see, as any technology is cheaper, it's kind of bound to be exploited for both aggressive and for very useful reasons. So there should, of course, be some kind of regulatory network to, to ensure that it, this does not happen. But that's kind of get um, But when the technology gets cheaper, it's bound to be used in environments that are less regulated. And that would be a huge problem. Do, do you see any? Uh, any any features for for kind of really yeah yeah uh, it's it's being used because two of the largest developments of um, GMO today are Brazil and China. We are seeing much of a biotech revolution happening in the world, but it's not happening in Europe.